Have been playing quite a lot of Space Marines 2 over the past week due to uh, Focus Entertainment giving me early access. I feel I'm in a semi comfortable position to bring you guys tips and tricks, especially for those beginners uh, that you should know about before playing the game. How's it going, guys? My name is DPJ. Now, again, thanks to Focus Entertainment, I'm actually giving away a copy of the Ultra Edition version of Space Marine 2. To win it, it's as simple as this drop a like on this video, make sure you are subbed, and leave me a comment down below. The more I see you are active, the more of a chance you have of winning. I'll pick one winner from the comments section and announce them on tomorrow's video. So, good luck, everybody. So this game consists of PvE and PvP. Today we talk about PvE and operations for the main part. Basically what you need to know, should know, and well tips and tricks to help you with your playthrough. So operations are this game's free man, co-op, player versus environment, PvE game mode. Yes, they are also match made, meaning if you don't have a team, you will auto find other players or be accompanied by bots. Now I'm pretty sure they promised not long after launch on September 9th that you will be able to play these operations solo, but please don't quote me on that. Now operations come with four difficulties, minimal, average, substantial and ruthless. You'll get better rewards and XP, obviously the harder difficulty you play on, simple as that. Now your main currencies within operations and basically the game uh, are requisition and the armoury data. Requisition is this game's currency used to purchase everything from armour colours to perks on your class and your weapon. Requisition though is capped at 990. Armoury data comes in three forms. Uh, these are master crafted which are green, artificer which is purple and relic which is yellow. These are also capped at I believe 20. Armour data is an item you find within operations within random locations. They also drop from random VIP bosses that can spawn in within these operations too. Now the three different armoury datas are obtained from the different difficulties. We've master crafted the green one coming from minimal and average, artificer comes from substantial and relic comes from that ruthless difficulty. Now, armory data is used solely on unlocking weapon versions. Uh, using weapons on a consistent basis will also earn you that XP uh, for them, which unlocks those mastery points. These are used in that weapons perk tree section. Now, all six classes do have weapons tied exclusive to them. Some of these are melee weapons, others are not. Now, you do get weapons that are available on multiple classes. This is great because it means if you level them up on one class, Whatever you unlocked is available on that other class that has access to this weapon. So requisition and armory data are very very important. Now you can earn requisition within playing PvP, always averaging around 20 to 25 per win, but you also get requisition and armory data from doing the class trials for each class too. Now back to operations though, and a few tips to help you out here. Obviously you will start off on that minimal difficulty and work your way up through leveling and progressing classes and hopefully some of these tips can help you out. Firstly, you earn XP relevant to the difficulty you play on, with minimal rewarding you 630 base XP upon your completing said operation. But like with every difficulty, this can be raised via you doing certain things throughout the mission and at the end of these missions uh, there is a list of categories where you can earn extra XP for doing the best in them. But there are also things hidden within these operations which you should take note of and try and find. Firstly, the gene seeds. These are basically XP relics. These are items you can find within operations which reward you and your whole team upon you completing the operation with it extra XP. But there's a catch to these. They do go within that Guardian Relic slot. Guardian Relics we'll talk about in a quick second because there's a few things you can use these for that are extremely beneficial, especially in the hard difficulties you uh, play on. But yes, these uh, GNCs go in that Guardian Rank slot, meaning you can't obviously carry a Guardian Rank with you. But there's also another catch with this. Whoever in your team or your squad picked up this Gene Seed, if you go down while holding it, you lose it forever. It's gone. So whoever picks this up needs to be certain they can survive. Probably treat them like a VIP, I'm not even joking. 
but yes, whoever picks up, make sure they can survive. Now you can swap it out for a guardian relic if you find one, which means it can be swapped with other players, uh, a tip you could use on those harder difficulties. Uh, if you come across a guardian relic on the floor, you can always swap this item out for it and then come back to the gene seed up after the section is completed or that mission is done and you're about to extract from it. Grab that gene seed wherever you left it and then simply finish the mission with it. As long as it's carried to the end, your whole team will gain the extra XP. Also within operations, there are a few other things you do want to take note of. There are those green boxes which when you destroy can drop you vital items like ammo caches, uh, med stims, armor and so forth. Hidden through these operations are, like I mentioned earlier, those guardian relics. Now, these are basically used to allow you to self raise So if you go down, you can raise yourself back up. Now a tip for these are, if you go down for the first time, uh, it doesn't apply that mortal wound to you. So here guys, I wouldn't bother using your guardian relic and hopefully wait for a teammate to revive you. I say this because you can use the guardian relic when you go down and have a mortal wound to heal yourself of the status and then you can go down another two times before you get that mortal wound back. Very very good tip for those playing those harder difficulties. Also by the way, the stem kits can remove the mortal wounds too. This is done by overhealing with those med kits, simple as that, so another thing to keep in mind. Now you know you have the mortal wound uh, effect because you see that school next to your health bar. So yeah. Now when you have that mortal wound, what it means is the next time you go down, you are removed from the fight and you'll wait a timer. If you do this while playing with bots in these operations, the mission is over. Another thing is to know is your health bar. So you will notice that when you take damage, your health drops, obviously, the red part of it drops anyway, but looking at your health bar, you'll see that there's also a trailing white bar with it. This white bar can be refilled by you dealing damage. This is great when you're meleeing your way out of a ton of enemies tearing the paint off your armor, so do keep that in mind. A couple of other tips within these operations, you can find those data slates if you're into that lore. But also people, there are traps too which you should be taking advantage of. From barrels which do amazing damage, to plasma containers which basically do the same thing, to actual traps that you can actually activate on the map and with good timing guys these can be very very helpful. Also loadout terminals, these are great for obviously swapping those loadouts in and out when you come across them but also at the same time if you select the same loadout you're already using it will refill that ammo. Okay, so now on to combat and a few tips here, especially for that melee combat as weapons themselves in regards to ones that shoot, those bullets and projectiles are really self-explanatory. But with melee though, there's a bit more to it. So melee weapons have unique combos and you can see these guys by pressing start. Now the sword represents a light attack here and the broken shield represents a heavy attack. Now you do your light attacks by simply just pressing that melee button. Holding the melee button will do you a heavy attack, so keep that in mind. Now also looking at those melee weapons, you can see the defense stat here. This is a very, very important stat, which you may need to take note of. Now chainsword within the melee weapons I've seen, I believe is the most balanced, uh, but you can see here when you hover above the defense stat, that it states fencing, uh, it states block, and it also states balanced. Now, fencing increases that perfect parry window, which is great, obviously. Block means there's no perfect parry window at all, but you obviously get much, much better blocking. And balanced has a moderate parry window. Uh, basically, sits in the middle of the two in regards to blocking and that parry. So that's a good stat to actually take note of, especially if you're on a melee, well, I say melee class. All classes in the game do have weapons to fire, but things like the bulwark, especially, this is definitely something you should probably invest time in in regards to if you do plan going for a melee build so yeah keep that in mind also learn and make use of these combos as each melee weapon is vastly different with some like the combat knight which is great against a solo enemy but when it comes against a crowd of them it's much much weaker yet the hammer and swords are incredible in dealing with multiple enemies while surrounded so yes pick your weapon wisely people 
Yes, I know some, some classes like the sniper class, my class we don't have that option, but hey, some do. Another very important mechanic in this game is parry and dodge. The parry and dodge system in this game is super, super important for your survival. So you will see those bigger enemies with those indicators when they're coming towards you. Yes, the smaller enemies do have these indicators too, where you can catch them in mid-air and basically choke slam them into oblivion. But with the bigger guys, there's actually some of the best ways to combat them to be able to finish them off much easier. So the blue indicator means counter. The orange indicator means dodge. Do you need perfect dodge or parry? On these bigger enemies, you will see that red crosshair appear on that enemy. You can follow them up with a hefty shot by just pressing that shoot button. They can also dodge and counter without seeing these orange and blue indicators too. So it's a system you want to get used to. There are also multiple benefits of pulling off a perfect dodge on multiple classes like my class with a sniper. Um, there's a perk here where you get active camo triggering on a perfect dodge which has saved me a whole heap of times. So what about finishes and executions? So these are used by pressing that right thumbstick in when you see an enemy glowing in red and upon you performing one of these, it will cover a section of your shield. Also, when you are surrounded and overwhelmed, an execution can give you a slight breathing window by pushing other enemies away. You also don't need to be as close to a glowing red enemy to finish them off as you may first think. Pressing in that right thumbstick from a few strides out will automatically activate the execution where your marine will automatically cover that distance. Also guys, hit markers with weapons. If you look closely, a hit marker to the body of an enemy will show you like a single crosshair, but hitting a headshot will show you like a doubled up crosshair. So not your target guys and pick off those shots properly. There's also a tag system in the game which I'm pretty certain everybody already knows about at this point. We can actually make use of this as it's a great tool when playing with randoms. For example, as if you didn't know about this, if you press back on your controller, you can actually see what equipment your teammates do and don't have. It also works great upon you stunning an enemy who can be finished. If you don't need that shield replen, you can always tag that enemy for a teammate who does need it. But yes, this tag system is absolutely great, especially when playing with randoms. I mean, you can point out data slates they may need them, you can point out armor, med packs, ammo, etc, etc, even guardian relics too. So yes guys. But I mean there we have it, that's all I can think of off the top of my head, especially for those new players to the game. If you have any advice for new players, let us know down below in the comments section, we do appreciate it. But there we have it guys for another video, if you enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps me out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys, I will see you on that next. One.